just when you think spring is here, March decides to remind you otherwise. We got three inches yesterday, some of it melted, and the rest is hanging around. It might disappear today, we'll see. While we ignored the snow outside, uh, Robert started a new task inside. We're starting the ceiling for the office. So as you know, we installed five inches of closed cell foam between the purlins and then down under the purlins. That is about R7 per inch. So let's say R35. And now we're installing some fiberglass bats that are an additional R25, hopefully bringing the assembly to R60 or so. Um, the only area where there is a, actually there is really no thermal break in the whole thing. Um, even the rafters have three and a half inches of closed cell foam on top of them. So this should be a, a beautiful roof assembly and the only real uh, bleeding of heat will be around the perimeter of it. The bats are 16 inch and Robert is suspending them in our 16 inch on center joists, just using some wires or insulation support wires. How did the insulation go yesterday? Uh, itchy. Itchy, as always. The Tyvek suits that he wears are going pretty darn well. Protects them for the most part, but you know, fiberglass is fiberglass.
So we finished the trim work on the doors. He used a really nice thick foam seal all the way around. And it's screwed in, it looks like every eight inches or so going up the top here. Because of the way we designed the concrete, we needed an exceptionally large cell plate to bridge from inside to outside. And so this is a three-parter. It's got a thermal break between the first and second part here. And it's basically a plastic insert that stops the wicking. That goes right under the edge of the door. Then there's a middle bit and another extension here. There's a metal piece that connects these two. And each piece is individually uh, screwed into the concrete. In our case, it's a little hard because it's such a funky threshold. Uh, these guys get a really nice bite into the concrete inside. These guys get a reasonable bite into the concrete apron. And the middle ones are kind of squishy. He was gentle with some, didn't over tighten them. And they should hold up pretty well. Plus, there's a lot of polyurethane under there. He did some seal around the edges, and tomorrow he'll come and finish cleaning that up, and that should look pretty good. On the bottom of the door, it's a double brush with a little thin piece of neoprene between it, and that should hopefully provide a pretty good seal on the bottom here. Getting these thresholds in certainly uh, scratched the doors up, and we're going to need to touch them up, uh, not, just the, not just due to the scratches, but also just due to the caulk. And there's some other things on the door, for example, these little plates here that we'll also need to touch up at some point. In hindsight, I think I would probably go with a residential door unless you needed the durability of a commercial. Just because they're clearly harder to seal. Their tolerances are looser and the hardware is just not quite as airtight as a residential door is. But they look good, they feel good, they'll hold up to a lot of wear and tear in this workshop. And I think with a little care and uh, some follow-up, we may be able to get this mostly airtight. The double door has the same type of hardware as the single door. There's one issue with this door that I don't love, and that's that it has a fair bit of slop here. And I can easily see a good gust of wind banging it around. The reason it is like that is because this hole up here is really big and there's a fair bit of slop in this connection. So I feel like that's an area that we could benefit from much smaller tolerances. Again, this is an issue where the tolerance of a commercial door is really uh, loose. And we're not looking for loose, we're looking for tight. So it involves a, a lot of extra work in order to get it there. Tomorrow he'll be back here just to clean up the work site. Uh, there's some caulk overage that he's gonna clean up. And he has to put a hole in the sill plate on this one in order to latch the second door uh, on the bottom. You saw the latch up top. Well, there's also a latch that goes through the sill plate and he's gonna drill that out tomorrow. At that point, the install for these two doors is done from our contractor's perspective. From our perspective, it's not done at all. We will have to fill these frames with expanding foam and water seal around the exterior there. I find it unlikely that even a driving rain is gonna get in, but we wanna minimize all possibility. And for that, we're definitely going to put an awning over this door. Not a massive one, but enough to block any rain that comes off the roof. Overall, I think we're pleased, but we're cautious about commercial doors. We bought the commercial doors because we wanted heavy duty. We wanted stainless steel ball bearing hinges. We wanted hardware that was completely rock solid. And we wanted a metal door that would take a beating. But this isn't a full-on commercial site. And it's possible we could have gotten most of those performance characteristics from a very high-end residential door. Maybe.